Well, hello everyone. Welcome, welcome to Face to Face Conversations with God. It's your girl Chantel, and it's time for us to dive into the book of Deuteronomy. We have already completed chapters one through eight, and today we are going to be reading chapters uh, nine, 10, 11, and 12. So you know what I'm doing. I'm getting ready to share on my different platforms. So come on in, share, share, share. If reading the word of God is blessing you, help it to bless others. All right, just hit that share button. All right, so here we go. Let me just get out here and share this real quick and then we're going to get started, okay? Welcome to face to face conversation as you all conversations with God as you all are coming on I am sharing the broadcast just give me a few moments and we will get started Oopsie Almost hit enter All right. Well, welcome everyone to Face to Face Conversations with God. We are continuing to read from the book of Deuteronomy. So as these other platforms are getting loaded up, we are going to go ahead and get started. All right? We're going to be reading from the Common English Version. Love it. This is a new version for me. I've never read from this version before. Um, I was listening to another sermon and somebody else was reading from this particular a book and I was like, oh, I kind of like that. It kind of reminds me of the Message Bible. The Message Bible is very easy to read also. Um, and I also parallel this with the King James Version, okay? All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get started reading for today. Deuteronomy chapters nine through 12. And first we are going to uh, open up in prayer, all right? So Father, we come before you thanking you for this opportunity to read your word together. We thank you for what you are doing in our lives as you are writing your word on the tables of our heart. We thank you, Lord God, hallelujah, for how you are searching our heart for anything that does not line up with your word, that anything that does not line up with the kingdom of God, in any area of our life where we are still operating from our own nature. Holy Spirit, we ask that you would highlight it that you would bring it to the forefront, that you would smoke it out so that we can recognize it and turn from it and never operate in that manner again. Whether it be in our attitudes, whether it be in our thought life, whether it be uh, uh, in our, our, the way we communicate with people, Whatever fashion it is, Father, if it doesn't line up with your presence, with your, with your spirit, with the kingdom of God, we ask that you would reveal it to us and then smoke it out, Hallelujah. annihilate it out of our personality, out of our character. Thank you, Lord God. We thank you that we 
are learning how to operate from the mindset of Christ. For you told us that in us, we have the mind of Christ. But a lot of times we have still been operating from our own mindset. Teach us how to walk after the kingdom of God and not after the kingdom of this world. We thank you for this, Father, in the name of Jesus, amen. We, oh, Father, we thank you for a teachable spirit. We thank you that you're softening our hearts so as we read the word, we won't reject what you're saying, but we will then embrace it and then apply it to our lives in the name of Jesus, amen. All right, well, here we go, everybody. We are going to get started. Deuteronomy chapter nine uh, from the Common English Bible. All right, against false piety and immodesty. Well, we do know that the word piety means religious, religious, false religion, false religiousness, false um, uh, reverence. <laughs> you know how we do. We, we say we reverence God with our mouth, but our heart is far from it. I give honor to God. I bless God for doing, and don't, and our heart is so far from him. All right, here we go. We're not that far off from the children of Israel. You know, a lot of times when we read the Bible, we're like, oh my gosh, I would never have responded to God like that. But you do it every day. <laughs> we're all guilty. <laughs> but look, this is the blessed thing about it. We see it, we read it, and now we go, oh God, I've operated like that. Do we walk around creating a golden calves? Maybe not a golden calf, but you're creating idols. No. Okay. All right. Well, let's just get busy reading. Let's see what God has to say. Deuteronomy chapter 9. Uh, against false piety and Im immodesty. Listen, Israel. Today you will cross the Jordan River to enter and take possession of nations larger and more powerful than you, along with huge cities with fortifications that reach the sky. These people are large and tall. They are the Anakim. You know, you have heard of what people say. Who can stand up to the Anakim? Know right now that the Lord your God, who is crossing over before you, is an all-consuming fire. He will wipe them out. He will subdue them before you. Then you will take possession of their land, eliminating them quickly, exactly as the Lord told you. Once the Lord your God has driven them out before you, don't think to yourself, it's because I'm righteous that the Lord brought me in to possess this land. It is instead because of these nations' wickedness that the Lord is, move, is removing them before you. When you begin to take possession of the inheritance that God has allotted for your life, don't ever get to the place where you think it's because of your righteousness and that you deserve this. <laughs> when God allows you to go in and take dominion in an area, it's because he wants his glory to reside in that area. The glory of him that is shining through you. All right? Verse 5. You aren't entering and taking possession of their land because you are righteous or because your heart is especially virtuous. Rather, it's because these nations are wicked. That's why the Lord your God is removing them before you. And because he wishes to establish the promise he made to your ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Know then that the Lord your God isn't giving you this excellent land for you to possess on account of your righteousness. Do you keep hearing the theme that God is trying to drive home? Anything that happens in our lives is not because we're so virtuous. It's not because we're so righteous. 
It's because there is a wickedness in the area. And God is saying, I want my kingdom to be represented in that area. So I'm going to take you and I'm going to cause you to go in and take dominion, to go in and start this business, to go in and be the, the CEO of a company, to go in and be a pastor, to go in and be whatever it is so that my glory can reside in that space instead of wickedness. It's not about you and I. Because, you know, we are just like the children of Israel, just as stubborn as we want to be. Come on. You know, there's areas in our lives where God is saying, come on, let me drive this out of you so that I can place you in an area so that I can be glorified in that area, in that sphere of influence. Wow. All right. Verse six again, know then that the Lord your God isn't giving you this excellent land for you to possess on account of your righteousness because you are a stubborn people. <laughs> Remember, don't ever forget how you made the Lord your God furious in the wilderness. From the very first day you stepped out of Egypt until you arrived at this place, you have been rebels against the Lord. <sighs> Woo! Come on. What area of your life are you rebelling against the Lord? And you have made a golden calf of that thing? And you have made an idol out of something in your life? And you are rebelling against the Lord. Even at Horeb, you angered the Lord. He was so enraged by you that he threatened to wipe you out. When I went up on the mountain to get the stone tablets, the covenant tablets that the Lord made with you, I was up there 40 days and 40 nights. I ate no bread, drank no water. The Lord gave me the two stone tablets written by God's finger, and on them were all the words that the Lord had said to you on the mountain, out of the very fire itself on the day we assembled. At the end of those 40 days and 40 nights, the Lord gave me two stone tablets, the covenant tablets. Then the Lord said to me, get going, get down from here quickly, because your people whom you brought out of Egypt have ruined everything. They couldn't wait to turn from the path I commanded them. They made themselves an idol out of cast metal. The Lord said more to me, I have seen this people. Look what a stubborn people they are. Now stand back. I'm going to wipe them out. I will erase their name from under heaven. Then I will make a nation out of you, one stronger and larger than they were. So I went down the mountain while it was blazing with fire. The glory of God is behind him and he's coming down the mountain. And this is what I like to see in here. I don't know if you see what I see, but here the thing is, Moses didn't see it, but God saw it. Look, I may not know what you're doing. Your pastors, your leaders, your whomever, your husbands, your wives may not know what you're doing, but God does. He sees it all. <laughs> I love it. You can't hide nothing from him. Verse 14, Deuteronomy chapter 9, verse 14, and we're reading from the Common English Version. Verse 14. Now step back. I'm going to wipe them out. I'll erase their name from under heaven, and then I'll make a nation out of you, one stronger and larger than they were. So I went down the mountain while it was blazing with fire. The two covenant tablets were in my two hands. It was then that I saw how you sinned against the Lord your God. You made yourselves a calf, an idol made of cast metal. You couldn't wait to turn from the path the Lord commanded you. I grabbed the two tablets and threw them down with my own hands, shattering them while you watched. Then I fell before the Lord as I had done previ the previous 40 days and 40 nights. 
I ate no bread, drank no water, all because of the sin that you had committed by doing such evil in the Lord's sight, infuriating him. I was afraid of the massive anger and rage the Lord had for you. He was going to wipe you out. However, the Lord listened to me again in that moment. But the Lord was furious with Aaron. Who was Aaron? The priest. What? He was going to wipe him out. So I prayed hard for Aaron at that time. And as for that sinful thing you made, that calf, I took it and I burned it with fire. Then I smashed it and grinded it thoroughly until it was as fine as dust. Then I dumped the dust into the streams that ran down the mountain. Also at Tibera, again at Mahasa, and then again at Kareth Bahavatha. Bahavatha. Have, I can't make that B sound. Hataba. You, uh, you have been the kind of people who make the Lord angry. And then when the Lord sent you to Kadesh Banera, telling you, go up and take possession of that land that I'm giving you, you disobeyed the Lord, your God's command. You didn't trust him. What? So when we don't trust God, we're disobeying him? Yeah. You didn't trust him. You didn't obey God's voice. You've been rebellious toward the Lord from the day I met you. Moses' intercessory prayer. Deuteronomy chapter 9, verse 25 from the Common English Bible. But I fell on my knees in the Lord's presence 40 days and 40 nights, lying flat out because the Lord planned on wiping you out. But I prayed to the Lord. I said, Lord, my Lord, don't destroy your people, your possession, whom you have saved by your power, whom you brought out of Egypt with a strong hand. Remember your servants, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Don't focus on this people's stubbornness, wickedness, and sin. Otherwise, that land out of which you brought us will say, the Lord wasn't strong enough to bring them into the land he promised them because he didn't care for them in the least. He brought them out to die in the desert. But these are your people, your possession, the people you brought out by your great power and by your outstretched arm. Deuteronomy chapter 10, new tablets. At that time, the Lord told me, carve two stone tablets, just like the first ones, and hike up the mountain to me. So he's like, come on back up here. We're going to go at it again. Construct a wooden chest as well. I will write on the tablets the words that were on the first tablets, the ones you smashed. Then you will place them in the chest. So I built a chest out of Acadia wood and carved two stone tablets just like the first ones. Then I hiked up the mountain holding the two tablets in my hand. God wrote on the new tablets what had been written on the first set, the Ten Commandments commandments that the Lord spoke to you on the mountain from the very fire itself on the day we assembled there. Then the Lord gave them to me. So I came back down the mountain. I put the tablets in the chest that I had made, and that's where they are now, exactly as the Lord commanded me. Now, the Israelites had set out from Beor ben Jacob to Moresh. It was there that Aaron died and was buried. His son Eleazar succeeded him in the priestly role. From there, the Israelites traveled to, ooh we I tried this a couple of times last night and really messed it up, to that place, which is a land flowing with streams. At that time, the Lord selected the tribe of Levi to carry the chest containing the Lord's covenant to minister before the Lord, to serve him, and to offer blessings in his name. 
That's the way things are right now. That's why the Levites don't have a stake or inheritance with the rest of their relatives. The Lord is the Levites' inheritance, just as the Lord your God promised them. Verse 10, just as the first time I remained on the mountain 40 days and 40 nights, and the Lord listened to me again in his in this instance, the Lord wasn't willing to destroy you. Then the Lord told me, get going, lead the people so they can enter and take possession of the land that I promised I'd give their ancestors. What the Lord requires. Now, in light of all that, Israel, what does the Lord your God ask of you? What is the Lord God asking of you and I? Only this, to revere the Lord your God by walking in all his ways, by loving him, by serving the Lord your God with all of your heart and being, and by keeping the Lord's commandments and his regulations that I'm commanding you right now. It is for your own good. That's all God requires of us, to honor him. Wow. Clearly, the Lord owns the sky, the highest heavens, the earth, and everything in it. But the Lord adored your ancestors, loving them and choosing the descendants that followed them, you, from all the other people. That's how things still stand now. So circumcise your heart, tear your heart, rend your heart, your heart, my heart. We must rend it. We must cause our hearts to be open to God and stop being so stubborn <laughs> because the Lord your God is the God of all gods and the Lord of all lords, the great mighty and awesome God who doesn't play favorites and doesn't take bribes. See, whew, this is how we, when we get so stubborn and we can't see how simple the word of God is, You'll do everything you can. You'll, you'll think, well, you know, God doesn't use me because he has favors. Well, the Lord, the word of the Lord says right here, God doesn't play favors, favorites, and he doesn't take bribes. As you yield your heart to him, you will begin to see the blessings of the Lord established and manifest in your life. Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 18, we're reading from the Common English Bible. He enacts justice for orphans. Listen to this. Listen, oh, America, please hear this. He, en he enacts justice for orphans and widows, and he loves immigrants, giving them food and clothing. That means you must also love immigrants because you were immigrants in Egypt. You know, after I read this last night, I was moved to tears because you see what's happening in America right now. And I've been praying, <clears throat> asking God to have mercy on us as a nation because of what we are doing to immigrants at this time. And I say we because we live here. So we all must begin to pray that God would move on the hearts of those that serve in our governmental system to turn their hearts to take, be mindful of the immigrants. Think about how these children are being pulled from their parents. And we don't even know where half of them are now. God is not smiling on that. That grieves the heart of God. We've got to pray that something will change, that hearts will shift concerning immigrants. Because truth be told, Every last one of us here in America, we're immigrants. All right? So don't get yourself all high-minded and think you don't have to pray about what's going on with these immigrants. We need to be praying about this. All right? All right. Revere the Lord your God. Serve him. 
cling to him, swear by his name alone. He is your praise and he is your God. The one who performs these great and awesome acts that you witness with your very own eyes. Your ancestors went down to Egypt with a total of 70 people, just 70. But now look, the Lord your God has made you as numerous as the stars in the nighttime sky. Started out with just 70 people. Deuteronomy chapter 11. So love the Lord your God and follow his instructions, his regulations, his case laws, and his commandments always. And know right now what your children haven't known or yet witnessed. The Lord your God God, the Lord your God's discipline, his power, his mighty hand and outstretched arm, the signs and the acts that he performed in the heart of the Egyptian territory against Egypt's king Pharaoh and all his land. What God did to the Egyptian army, to its horses and chariots, how he made the water of the Red Sea flow over their heads when they chased after you. But the Lord destroyed them, and that's how things stand right now. All God doing is reiterating to the children of Israel all that he has done. And he's saying to them, look, as I get ready to take you into your promised land, as I get ready to take you into this inheritance, remember me, all right? Hello, hello. Hey, Tyler, how are you? Good morning. Wow. Hello, hello, hello. Um, Where are we? What God did to the Egyptians. Oh, I read that. Verse five. What the Lord did for you in the desert until you arrived at this place. And what he did to Dathan and uh, Abram, the descendants of Elab the Reubenite, when the ground opened up its mouth and swallowed them, their families, their tents, and every living thing they possessed in the presence of all Israel. Your own eyes witnessed each of these powerful acts the Lord performed. So keep every part of the commandment that I'm giving you today so that you stay strong to enter and take possession of the land that you are crossing over to possess. And so that you might prolong your life on the fertile land that the Lord swore to your ancestors to give them and their descendants a land full of milk and honey. The land you are about to enter and possess is definitely not like the land of Egypt where you came from where you sowed your seeds and irrigated it uh, by hand, like a vegetable garden. No, this land you are entering to possess is a land of hills and valleys where your drinking water will be rain from heaven. It's a land that the Lord cares for. The Lord's eyes are on it constantly from the first of the year until the very end of the year. Now. If you completely obey God's commandments that I am giving you right now by loving the Lord your God and by serving him with all your heart and all your being, then he will provide rain for your land at the right time. Early rain and late rain. So you can stock up your grain, wine, and oil. He will also make your fields lush lush for your livestock, and you will eat and be satisfied. But watch, but watch yourselves. Otherwise, your heart may be led astray, so you stray away serving other gods and worshiping them. When God brings you into that place of plenty, and you're no longer in lack, and your land is fertile, and, and okay, so we're saying land. So your life is fertile. 
You got that good job, just like we said on yesterday. You got houses, you got cars, you got all those things that you desire. Watch. Watch your heart so that you don't begin to turn and begin to worship other gods instead of the Lord God who brought you out and who established you. All right. Verse uh, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 17. Then the Lord's anger will, will burn against you. He will close the sky up tight. There won't be any rain and the ground won't yield any of its crops. You will quickly disappear off the wonderful land the Lord has given you. So all that you built up through the Lord's power, you will see it crumble. Place these words I'm speaking on your heart and in your very being. Tie them on your hand as a sign. They should be on your forehead as a symbol. Teach them to your children by talking about them when you're sitting around your house and when you're out and about, when you are lying down and when you are getting up. Write them on your house's door frame and on your city gates. Do all that so your days and your children's days on the fertile land that the Lord swore to give your ancestors are many, indeed, as many as the number of the days that the skies been over the earth. It's true. If you carefully keep all this commandment that I'm giving you by doing it, by loving the Lord your God, by walking in all his ways and clinging him, then the Lord will clear out all these nations before you. You will inherit what belongs to nations that are larger and stronger than you are. Every place you set your foot on will be yours. Your territory will run from the wilderness all the way to the Lebanon range and from the Euphrates River all the way to the Mediterranean Sea. No one will be able to stand up to you. Just as he promised, the Lord your God will make the entire land deathly afraid of wherever you advance in it. Ceremony on Mount Gizurim and Mount Ebal. Pay attention. I'm setting blessings and I'm sorry. I'm setting, I am setting blessing and curse before you right now. The blessing, if you obey the Lord, your God's commandments that I'm giving you right now, but the curse, if you don't obey the Lord's commandment and stray from the path that I am giving you today by following other gods that you have not known. Hmm. Now, when the Lord your God brings you into the land that you are entering to take possession of, put the blessing of Mount Gerzim and the curse of Mount Ebal. Aren't both of these mountains across the Jordan River, down along the Western Road, in the region of the Canaanites who live in the desert plain, across from Gilgal, next to Moray Oak Grove? He said, you see them. So then once you cross the Jordan to enter, I'm sorry, the Jordan River to enter and possess the land that the Lord your God is giving you, and you take possession of it, settling down in it, you must carefully follow the regulations and the case laws, the statutes and the judgments that I am laying out before you right now. In our last chapter for the day, Deuteronomy chapter 12. Regulations and case laws. Worship at the location the Lord selects. These are the regulations, the statutes, the judgments, the case laws that you must carefully keep in the fertile land the Lord, your ancestors' gods, God has given to you to possess for as long as you live on that land. You must completely destroy every place where the nations that you are displaying, I'm sorry, displacing, worshiped their gods, whether on high mountains or hills or under leafy green trees, rip down their altars, 
and shatter their sacred stones, burn their sacred poles with fire, hack their gods' idols into pieces, wipe out their names from that place. Don't act like they did toward the Lord your God. Hmm. Instead, you must search for the location the Lord your God will select from all your tribes to put his name there as his residence, and you must go there. You must bring your entire, uh, you, I'm sorry, you must bring your entirely, wait a minute, you must bring your entirely burned offerings, yeah, your sacrifices, your 10th part gifts, your contributions, your payments for solemn promises, your spontaneous gifts, and the oldest offspring of your herd and flocks to that place. You will have a feast there, each of you and your families in the Lord your God's presence, and you will celebrate all you have done because the Lord your God has blessed you. Don't act like we've been acting here lately. Everyone doing what seems right to them. Because up to this point, you haven't yet reached the place of rest or the inheritance of the Lord your God is giving you. But you are about to cross the Jordan River and will settle in the land the Lord your God is giving you as your inheritance. Then he will give you rest from all your enemies on every side so that you live safely and securely. At that point, you must bring all that I am commanding you, your entirely burned offerings, your sacrifices, your 10-part gifts, your contributions, and all your best payments that you solemnly promise to the Lord, to the location your the Lord your God selects for his name to reside. Verse 12. Then you will rejoice in the Lord your God's presence, each of you, your sons and your daughters, your male and female servants, and the Levites who dwell in your cities because they have no designated uh, inheritance. But watch yourself. Make sure you don't offer up your entirely burned offerings in just any place you see. No, only the location the Lord selects from one of your tribal areas. That's where you must offer up your entirely burned offerings, and that's where you must perform everything I'm telling you. However, whenever you wish, you may slaughter and eat as the Lord your God sees fit to bless you with such in your cities. People who are polluted and people who are purified can join in, in in the feast as they would if they were eating gazelle or deer. But you must not consume any of the animal's blood. Pour it out on the ground just like water. Within your cities, you are not allowed to eat any of the following. Your 10th part gifts of grain, wine, and oil the oldest offspring of your herd and flocks, any of the payments you have solemnly promised, your spontaneous gifts or your contributions, only in the presence of the Lord your God, at the location the Lord your God selects, can you eat these things that holds true for you, your sons and daughter, your male and female servants, the Levite who lives in your city, I'm sorry, and the Levite who lives in your city. Then celebrate all you have done in the Lord your God's presence. But watch yourself as long as you are on the land. Don't forget about the Levites. Verse 20. Once the Lord your God has enlarged your territory as he promised you, and you think to yourself, I'd like to eat some meat because you have a desire to do so, Feel free to do so whenever you want. But if the location that the Lord your God will choose to put his name in is far away from where you live, then slaughter an animal from your herd or your flock that the Lord has given you, just as I have commanded you, and eat in your cities 
whenever you wish. But be sure to eat it as if it was a gazelle or a deer. People who are polluted and people who are purified can feast on it together. Furthermore, make sure that you don't consume any of its blood because blood is life. You must not consume the life along with the meat. You must not consume any of it. Pour it out on the ground just like it is water. Verse 25. You must not consume any of it so that the things so that things go well for you and your children later because you did what was right in the Lord's eyes. Note that you must bring your sacri uh, sacred offerings and your payments for solemn promises to the location the Lord selects. Offering up your entirely burned sacrifices of both meat and blood on the Lord your God's altar. The, the blood from your sacrifices must be poured out on the Lord your God's altar, but you are allowed to eat the meat. Observe and obey all these words that I am commanding you so that things always go well for you and your children. Later, because you did what was good in the uh, good and right in the Lord your God's eyes. Verse 29. Once the Lord your God has removed them from you, all the nations that you are entering and taking possession of, and you have displaced them that are living in their land, living in their land then watch yourself don't be trapped by following their practices after they have been wiped out before you don't go investigating their gods thinking how did these nations worship uh, their gods i want to do the very same thing he said be careful don't do that don't act like they did toward the Lord your God because they did things for their gods that are detestable to the Lord, which he hates. They even burned their own sons and daughters with fire for their gods. Everything I'm commanding you, you must do it with utmost care. Don't add anything to it or take anything away from it. My God. God is teaching us uh, what he was teaching the children of Israel, to honor him. Look, there are many gods in this world, but God is saying, don't go investigating them. Don't seek them out. Don't worship them because I am the God over all the gods here, gods here in this world. He said, seek after me, honor me, worship me. All right. He is the one who is the one that is blessing you, okay? So when God blesses you and you're in that place of, of rest, you're in that place of plenty, you're in that place where you, uh, you see the labor of your hands is actually being uh, fruitful to you, don't forget God. He's the one who gave you the strength to build the business, to get the degree, to do whatever it is that you did, all right? It's him that strengthened you. And he's saying, don't forget me. When you make it to that place of rest, when you make it to that place of ease, you know how we do. You got a little money in the bank account and you start filling yourself. Don't forget God, because remember he was there with you when you didn't have money in the bank account and you didn't have multiple cars and you didn't have multiple selections in the closet to choose from and you didn't have food and, oh, I don't have to eat at home today. I got food in the freezer, but I'm going to go out and eat. Don't forget God. It's him that blessed you, that gave you the strength to get to where you are now. Don't forget him. Don't start worshiping other gods instead of, giving honor to God. Don't get that me, God. I did this and that's pride. I did that. That's pride. It was me that opened up this business. That's pride. Come on. Let's be careful to always honor God. It's his strong arm that brought you out. It's his strong arm that delivered you. 
It's his strong arm that healed your body. Don't forget it. Now you're no longer sick and you've forgotten God. While you were going through that trial, you prayed every day, stayed before him. You're well, you've forgotten him. You don't remember the last time you prayed. Don't forget him. All right? All right. Well, we'll be back on here tomorrow uh, reading Deuteronomy 13, 14, 15, and 16. Lord willing, I'm going to try to come back on tomorrow about this same time, uh, and we will continue reading. All right? I love you all. Don't forget to hit the share button, and we'll be back on here uh, Lord willing, tomorrow, okay? I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.